Today I'm setting up my coffin shaped spider enclosure from Primal Fear Tarantulas. The first thing I'm going to add is this biomix, which is a mixture between cocoa fiber, topsoil, and peat moss. This substrate will maintain humidity and it'll be a great base layer for me to build the rest of the enclosure on. My plan is to keep a black widow spider inside of this enclosure. These spiders usually spend most of their time toward the top of the enclosure, so I'm going to include a stick that's as tall as the enclosure to give her something to anchor her webs to. I included these two fake plants just to give the enclosure some color. And the centerpiece for this enclosure is this lower jaw from a young javelina. So now she has some high anchor points and some low anchor points to web up. And then I added a few more pieces for additional anchor points and just for aesthetics. I may change a few things before introducing the spider, but overall I'm really happy with the way this enclosure turned out. I think there's enough in there to keep her comfortable while also maintaining visibility of her. And it also helps that you could view the spider from any direction with this enclosure. Today we got a spider for the coffin enclosure that we got from Primal Fear Tarantulas. I wanted to find a black widow, but I found this one inside of a reclining chair that I was throwing away. So it sort of just appeared to me, and I took that as a sign as maybe this is the right one for now. To me, spiders are one of the most fascinating creatures on earth, but I'm not a spider expert, so I need a little help identifying this one. I've narrowed it down to three possible spiders. Based on all the pictures that I looked through, the apps I've used, and the books that I've flipped through, it could be a brown widow, a male, black black widow or possibly a juvenile female black widow. I've reached out to a few experts for help but I'm still waiting on answers. If you're familiar with these species let me know what you think in the comments. As soon as I dropped this little one in the enclosure it went to work building a web. Widows are in the cobweb family of spiders so they don't create the big symmetrical webs that are often associated with spiders. Their webs often appear messy and disorganized but in fact they are expertly created to do a job. But more on that later. For now we're gonna let this little one settle in and we'll check up on them soon. I checked up on our spider this morning and I noticed that it's getting a little darker. After reading through your comments and talking with spider expert Aaron McKee, we have concluded that this is indeed a western black widow. The markings on the back indicate that it's a juvenile, but we're not sure if it's male or female yet. I noticed that there was something in the bottom of the enclosure. When I got a closer look, I discovered that it was a fresh molt. So just like when a snake grows, it sheds its skin. A spider sheds its exoskeleton as it grows. So the spider is growing and developing into an adult. So this explains why I noticed the darkening and changing in the spider's coloration. With very young black widows, it's nearly impossible to tell the difference between male and female. But as they grow, the females will become all black and grow much bigger than the males. Since she molted, I decided to offer her a meal. I placed a small cricket on her web. And then we wait it. And wait it. And wait it and wait it. Since it wasn't doing much, we decided to darken the room and give it some privacy, and we'll check up on it later. I was going in to feed my black widow spider when I noticed that it molted again. It just molted five days ago, so I wasn't expecting to see another one so soon. Similar to how snakes shed their skin, spiders molt when they grow. So it must be growing pretty quickly. And I also noticed that it got much darker. Which leads me to believe that this is a female. I decided to offer her another meal. I placed a cricket near the bottom of her web. And it didn't take her long to go to work. First she used her silk to immobilize the cricket's legs. And once she was confident that the cricket couldn't harm her, she went in for the bite. During this bite, she releases a neurotoxic venom into the cricket. The venom will paralyze the cricket and turn its insides into liquid. After envenomating the cricket, she continued to wrap it up and then hoisted the cricket high into the web where she spends most of her time. After securing the cricket into position, she feasted. And she ate until her abdomen was two, maybe three times the size of it was prior. After gorging on that cricket, it'll be about a week before she's hungry again. Today we're checking up on Lilith, my black widow. We fed her a cricket a few days ago, and after subduing her prey, she hoisted it up into her web where she feasted. But when I checked up on her today, I noticed that the cricket is no longer in the web. Apparently she likes to keep a tidy home, so after she got done eating, she kicked the cricket out of her web. I removed the cricket from the ground beneath the web. It was a fairly large cricket, but as you can see here, she totally sucked out the insides, leaving nothing but a shell. I also noticed that she's getting even darker and losing the markings on her back. Here's a photo from only a week ago. This happens as black widows transition from juvenile to adult. Lilith will get most of her water from the foods that she eats. However, about once a week I like to lightly mist her enclosure, just in case she needs an extra drink. It's truly fascinating to see the changes that she's undergoing as she transitions from juvenile to an adult. We don't know the exact day that she hatched, but it takes them approximately 125 days for them to transition from juvenile to an adult. But based on all of her changes, I think in another few weeks she'll be fully grown. 
Today we're feeding Lilith, my western black widow. Her last two meals were crickets, so today we're going to change things up and offer her a wax worm. I placed the worm inside of her web and waited for her to respond. Although they have eight eyes, black widows don't have the best eyesight. Their eyes primarily detect movement and changes in light. She primarily uses the vibrations in her web to find her meal. She has organs on her legs and body known as the slit sensula, or the slit sense organ. This organ allows her to be incredibly synced to the vibrations in her web. It makes her entire web an extension of her senses. She can easily tell the difference between a meal stuck in her web from something else like a leaf falling into her web or even the wind blowing. After envenomating the waxworm, she hoists it high into her web where she'll begin to feed. Digestive enzymes that she released into the waxworm turns its insides into liquid. Over the next few hours, she'll suck the insides completely out of the waxworm, leaving nothing but a shell. You can see how much her abdomen expanded, so this was a big meal for her. She won't need to eat again for at least another 10 days. And this is Lilith now. You could see how much she's changed over the last 47 days.